Hi, uh, thank you for tuning in. I am Sarah Chiu. The name is Basket Starfish, our language core. Sorry for some technical problem the last two times, you know, but still this week I am still using uh, Google Slides. And uh, this week I'm going to talk a little bit about the, um, the concept, the ancient concept of the trailing movement. It seems that, you know, because of the technology, they had already started to understand, you know, the Excel. So the main point of my talk today is the Excel. How did uh, it, uh, the ancient try to express the Excel and how it came down to us now, how, why you spell it with A-X-L-E, okay? So uh, I'm going to start my slides this week. Okay, um, okay. I'm going to start from the beginning. Okay, um, basket starfish. Okay, if you miss any points, you can always type the name, you know, basket starfish, our language core in YouTube, and this should be the 67th episode. And uh, I try to uh, say it again and again. I believe that we share one common core. This is the uh, prototype that I try to present to you. It's more like a basket starfish than a separate family tree because I believe that if we looked at us with a separate roots that we usher in human hierarchy always there are people you know who have more power and economic power then they do researches and always promote their language as earlier and that's why it makes up the human hierarchy in us even in our modern society so uh, only when we look at this you know as a basket starfish all of us start from a same common core back in history uh, only we branch into different area we concentrate Concentrate on different things and and really is one big organism itself okay so I want uh, you know our view of looking at language family um, and to be changed okay and I present to you from an uh, Asian um, point of view and also a female and as I keep presenting to you how the ancient patriarchs you know keep taking away the words that actually meant uh, meant to be uh, for female okay so so, but anyway, uh, this week I'm going to start with this. Um, as I said, you know, I believe that is a common core since ancient time because the modern way of looking at everything as a line in a linear way is actually uh, brings in cultural hierarchy and actually also disregard the interaction of all our ancestors. And uh, believe it or not, in contrary to the superstitions that in modern education that always, you know, you find something written down, then you prove that you know definitely it, it existed and uh, my point is that uh, the most known facts in our human society were never got written down because it's too well known and I'm, I'm sure you know the uh, another phrase that you know what is not said is understood okay so uh, basically human society always function in this way you will not find a literature telling you how to make a phone call uh, you know dialing a phone now because everybody knows how to do it why would you need something to be written down right so um, also I say it is necessary to compare language in every level other than just a mathematical theory like most of the Western linguists these days and then I believe that because I travel from place to place for more than 20 something actually more than 30 something years the first part was for my art project and the uh, last 20 something years is basically chasing after the, 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 the core of the ancient languages so this verbal tradition and in, in, in by net illiterate people, illiterate people are actually very resistant and verbal tradition is actually very, very uh, consistent, you know, in retaining the ancient sources, okay? So um, last week I didn't finish this one, but this week I want to start with this one to show you how words actually travel already in the ancient time. And I need to, uh, to present this because I want you to understand why the word beginning has to start with the word be. And that also connects with why the Hebrew Bible has to start with the letter B and why, you know, the uh, 
the, the Greek Bible in order to follow the ancient tradition that they understood has to start with the um, uh, Matthew and then it has to start with the word Biblio and also with a B because the B for the ancient has always been uh, the sound and also the image of a foot you know it's always the action to begin okay so uh, with this map I show you you know the linkage of a lot of these in, uh, languages and pic in pictograph that you think are not connected okay the first one is the Egyptian hieroglyph the K and then this is the K and G in Chinese and it's definitely the basket and this is is key in proto Greek, you know, in the in the present Greek area, which they know who they they were. So they didn't know who they were, and but then you see that this is very consistent all this K sound but uh, I already showed you last week that somewhere in Indonesia you have this very famous Karajan and this is uh, started with the K the basket and but then this is a very famous uh, rice dish to celebrate you know a lot of festivals and you will see that the basket actually travel all this way there and that's why you will see in Southeast Asia you will always see you know the hats in the form of a, of a, a triangular cone okay so this uh, actually you know it's very consistent travel from place to place but um, in order to show this uh, the following one you know I show you this to show you how consistent things are co in inside with each other okay so this is a very ancient Egyptian pictograph you know in Sumerian and this is a Chinese oracle writing you know uh, both you know trying to present you know a foot with some kind of a head it's like a thinking foot that uh, has a conscious that moves it okay so in in Chinese you know at the time sometimes it also just present itself as two bull heads right there this is the bronze age when people are really hurting animals and interesting enough whenever we see the head we kind of have to understood it as the as a foot okay so uh, it actually also you know uh, uh, conserve the sound R it also conserve the sound uh, uh, P and as the pets the foot okay it also conserve the sound B as we try to say uh, walking we actually use this sign to show walking okay so um, this is very obvious if you can google it easily you know the foot itself in Egyptian hieroglyph is a representation of the B or the bow sound and then as you know that they always use the bull head as the kind of a soul some kind of energy so you will see that you know the Chinese were actually using very similar thing imagine the foot with the thinking head then that's the when you, you have a soul animal then you can start to move okay so um, again this is the B in Phoenician that gradually become your B now in, in, in Latin alphabet and then as far as the uh, um, Mayan you will see that uh, the footprint itself is also representing a B sound but now let me compare these to you okay the Chinese again you know is uh, the word changes we pronounce it still as bow uh, uh, means walking okay and the steps okay and the Egyptian hieroglyph this is a B or the bow and exactly the same sound like this when the Chinese have this when we turn it upside down it has still the sound of pat pat actually co inside with the Egyptian hieroglyph you know the bigger part of the lake you know pets which actually uh, become you know the Greek uh, pedal pedal and then uh, you understand is the pedestrian whatever has to do with the foot too okay but uh, regarding the alphabet the Phoenician has this representation of a B but I flip it around and um, as a P you know because this two sound is always a shifting sound so they are co closely related and when I uh, traveled to Tunisia following the footstep of the Phoenician I found a lot of this in the museums and uh, you will see that you know the foot even as a sign appear in all the ancient languages uh, early scripts and you will actually if you pay attention in museum you'll find a lot of different foods around why are they so ubiquitous you know because you know in the Phoenician we they uh, know it very clearly that they turn it upside down they actually use it as a pestle a uh, pestle is actually the foot you know trying to 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 
but to pound the, the grain and, 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 and doing the ancient job, right? So uh, this, that's why the bee is actually upside down because they actually turn it around, you know, and pound the seeds, you know, to, to as food. But they are not the originator of the shape. If you look at the ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, this is a, a pounder, you know, the mortar and pestle. They actually pound the things. Can you see the shape of that? You know, it's actually the food upside down like that. And then uh, if you don't believe that, we actually uh, travel a lot with our ancient culture. Look at this, actually in the same area, not just in Indonesia. I saw it in a few different places in Southeast Asia. They all have the pestle until this very day in this strange shape, you know. When uh, when the Dutch arrived in uh, Indonesia, they actually make a big fuss on in this very interesting shape. But if you actually chase it around, and then you can actually see that it goes back all the way there's all this um, connection you know all the way back to ancient time okay so as I said you know you now you get the you know the the sense of why B is always B B uh, is always leading also the writing cycle that's why A is the unseen energy and B is the actual physical part of a human body that they use to represent the beginning of an action but the beginning of action need the soul to to begin that's why the A uh, uh, started to lead the cycle okay so I am going to uh, uh, explain to you how the ancient tried to express the beginning and the end and of course between the beginning and the end is always the axis okay and this is very important and you have understood that uh, I've said again and again and it's actually all over the internet that you know the alpha or the uh, or the aleph at the beginning it actually started you know like a bull head and that is turned around became the A and then um, and the Phoenician put the A as a tau, you know, with the sound, and it's actually the end of that, and it actually, you know, coincide with the very ancient time, you know, when the Sumerians started to express themselves, you know, the of making ropes, you know, as threads. They know the act of trailing, so they already started to put those uh, unseen energy, the bull head, right there, you know, to to express the any thread or rope. Okay, the action of trailing, and because of that, they actually are. Uh, look at the sun and the moon they actually understand that the cyclical view of existence very very early thousands and thousands of years ago and then why the Greek um, gradually you know they 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 abandoned this, they actually incorporated the, it as an, uh, a he sound, H sound, but then they actually used this and the, this as an omega sign. And um, this is my explanation. You can go and have a look. Uh, I mean, you can continue to, to, to look at my explanation. And if you pay attention, the Greek has a lot of jewelry, like the ancient Egyptians, you know, but by this time, you know, all those snake and the bull had actually surrendered to a very important Important sign you will see that very importantly the Greek kind of like to worship the ram you know and all of a sudden the bull actually took a second uh, very uh, space and then the ram and actually took over you know as the very important head and a lot of this bangle were made in this shape and you know with the ram head and you will see that you know they actually have a very uh, interesting cyclical view of existence and it is at this time that gradually they understand understand that uh, life is in cycles and cycles but in between these cycles they seem to understand there is a little gap right there that's why I keep saying that the Tao you know actually comes in you know to 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 uh, bridge over this little gap and this is what the modern religious view came in and then what are these two signs right there? Uh, because, you know, the uh, capital uh, Omega is actually a little bit different from this uh, sign right there. Why is it like this? Uh, it, that seems to have no connection right there. And this we understand is came from the cyclical view of the, the, of the ancient Greek. But this is actually their knowledge of the uh, astronomy. And the ram took over. And because it is actually like the bull itself, 
itself it is an upside down sign of the ram horn okay and by this time you know after the age of Taurus they actually understand you know this is the beginning of the age of the Aries and that's why you know the um, the the ram horn actually turns upside down exactly like that and you will if you pay attention it is a very interesting twist you know when they start to call this areas and the, the ram they actually call the bull Taurus and exactly they actually again reverse the ancient tradition the A and the Tau exactly as the Phoenician putting the Alpha and the Tau and it's the ancient way of twisting things wrong and wrong again okay so uh, that's why you know you will see that at the beginning you know most of the Jesus sign you know I will always have this A like this and then the, the, the Omega is actually in this shape not in this shape this is actually a little bit more um, used later the earlier one always following their the astronomical knowledge of uh, the ram age that's why the ram you know took in all the form of God and all the form of leader okay so uh, uh, by talking about the axis is actually you have to understand it is the principle um, understanding to all our human invention since the ancient uh, Egyptian I mean ancient Sumerian they understood this is uh, the X uh, the axis and the Chinese will express it uh, in a similar form and this is the Chinese expression of the sorry this is the Chinese expression of the uh, trailing of a uh, uh, um, leather okay this is a leather uh, rope you know so they also uh, go round and round we also express it as two very interesting bull like forms uh, but we conserve the sound of Y and I can tell you that this Y sound is actually um, the actually the uh, also the coordinate of your world and will and will and wind which is blowing around okay or or you can read it as wind winding okay the going around and the world so you will see that uh, um, even the sound from east and west is very very consistent you just have to look at it at the right lens and with it the right angle okay so the linear uh, linear way of understanding things are very very difficult to 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 find out the truth okay so again I will show you you know briefly you know why this trolling movement actually helped human being to to develop into what we are now okay like the uh, press of the seeds and also the ancient wine press and because of that you will see that we have already the early prototype of the screw okay and then also because of the wheel we start to to make a fast and fast production of weaving of clothes and even the word weave okay is to go round and round okay so also the wheel itself and then uh, your even for amusement and also uh, the sundial the compass and if we begin to count time itself or be because you know we begin to use you know an uh, a utensil or a tool with the axis turning around so this understanding is very important of course later on we have the astro lab you know where, where we can find star we can we believe that you know we we are the first one to travel in the ocean but no the ancient since they use you know they know the axis there will be 100,000 way they can use different devices you know to calculate a lot of things that's why they they were able to understand they were going into a new age from the age of Taurus to the a to the age of Aries so it all because they knew how to calculate you know because of this very very simple principle of this axle right there you know uh, conceptually you can just express it as a as a cross right there it means the unseen power in the center or in the heart itself and then of course the word is axis and then the A itself is a very ancient tradition of that unseen energy you know so even in English this is also following a very very ancient tradition so the early mental concept is a, cyc a cyclical beginning and the end okay so 
when I show you this, you know, you can see the beginning and the end and you can also see the center right there, okay? So um, the Chinese will use this way, but the Chinese actually also use a bull head other than the two ends. Chinese also use the bull head to mean something station. So that's why we use it to mean the foot because the foot when it's not walking, it actually means station. So uh, interestingly, you can actually use three bull head to mean three different things. It means the beginning, the end it also means the stationary center the axle okay so the Chinese also have this word have you can see so we spin it around you know from this to this and definitely I can sh I can assure you that uh, in depending on the context when you shift that around that might have a very subtle difference in the understanding of the ancient okay it's not necessarily just the flipping around of a symbol it can mean a completely opposite meaning okay so uh, the um, Latin alphabet become you know twist around the uh, I mean the Greek and then it become the alpha and again this is the Tau and interestingly uh, the, the Chinese also as I show in the last few uh, episodes and we have a sign like this also the last number in Chinese and well, we have a sign of Do also means to cross over and then when we see a head itself we actually call it a Tau so you will see that Tao actually for the Chinese means an end and a beginning and also it means an end depending on the context okay and the same way the West is using this Tao as the last alphabet and and you will see that as I said the Greek use this you know because this the upside down uh, ho uh, ram horn is the areas this is the Taurus this is the A and the Tao uh, also flipping around and as you can see and then because the ancients always use this, you know, to represent time and eternity, you will see that it is a continuous sun cycle right there. And then um, the Greek uh, have this gap right there, as I said, but you will see that this uh, is a very heavily loaded sign right there, the Omega. Because if you write the Omega in a small uh, sign like this, it's actually show you is actually a ram head because the Ra right there are a ra right there actually for all the ancient it means the head as I keep telling you the Raja and also the Ras and the Resh in the Semitic uh, lineage it also means the head it seems that the ancient is simply means you know telling you that is this the ram head right there but if you write it in a capital form aura it actually religiously means the final hour and when the judgment comes and then when it becomes the small uh, or I mean in Omicron, the small O, it means aura, the tail. And, and in Greek, if you are ancient Greek, O, it also means no. And Ra, it means the head. It's actually interesting, you can explain it as not head. That means the tail, okay? And then because of this word, it, the ora, ora actually means tail. The ora knows for the Greek become religiously, become the heaven. What comes at the end is heaven, okay? So that's why later this uh, sign become more and more dominate, dominating rather than this one, okay? So I will show you the sound now, you know, how the sound of the head in the oceanic languages. Again, you know, this is the uh, cyclical wave of the ancient, and if the uh, bull head becomes the uh, Western A, the Chinese, you look at the head, we say Tao right there. And then the last alphabet, the cross right there, is actually the Tao of the Phoenician. And I will show you, you know, this is the uh, the, the, the full uh, cycle of the life cycle, okay? This is the capital Omega, this is the small letter Omega. And then, as I said, it's the Aries. And then the Chinese, look at the Chinese, we have a bunch of writing. I'm not trying to show you how to write it, but I will show you the Cantonese sound, okay? Uh, we will pronounce it as Tao or Tao, or A Tao, or A Tao, or Lo Tao. Look at all this sound, what they mean. It means head, the boss, the first, the chief, or something leading, or the leader, okay? Or it means the head, or it means the end, or the beginning. As you can see this, even I write it like this, I can pronounce it as a Tao, or Tao. And now look at this Maori. A Tao actually means God, 
in ancestor or the ghost or the soul itself or the tour actually means the year the time which is a, the, what the ancient consider this as a time a sign of time the final hour at the Samoan as the tour is also the forefather ancestor exactly like the Chinese who say a Tao or Tao as the father or Lo Tao as the father so you will see that the sound is very very consistent you can find them in places that you don't expect only if you don't follow a linear way okay so how do we deal with the two heads the beginning and the end both are heads okay and then you will see that the Greek understood it this way and then when the Roman comes you know they have this January the genus you know uh, the two-headed God if you look at the ancient history this actually at the beginning this is actually uh, places you know higher than Jupiter itself you know this is a much higher uh, uh, area the ancient actually called this coin ace okay and except Exactly like you call the, the playing card the ace, the card ace is actually the first card, right? So you will see that sometimes, you know, the sound just lifts on, it doesn't seem to make sense. But when they say the ace is the highest value of a coin, of the Roman coin, and the ace is actually the highest value of your playing card too, okay? So this two ace right there, two representing the beginning and the end, representing the two heads. The towers will be like this, the arrows will be like this. This. look at all these ancient signs of Jesus Christ when he kept saying that I'm Alpha and Omega look at this it is just all uh, the twisting around of this uh, Taurus sign and also the Aries sign he's actually uh, telling people that I am the leader of this big age right there turning around and then uh, the beginning and the center this is uh, I try to finish this one okay you can call the middle uh, or you can call it the heart okay you will see very interesting Interesting that the under, ancient understand three unseen power as the head. Okay, either you turn it around the Chinese, as I said, this two head Chinese represented like this, and then the head and all the beginning. Okay, and then the Chinese will use these two signs flipping around, and the Sumerian also have this, but they already monopolize it for to mean a male. Of uh, uh, you know the the patriarch also took it over. But if you look at the Sumerian a bear, which means also the start, you will see it like this, and you will see that this little sign right there is actually coming from the bull head. But what is the big sign right there? But I I will show you one sign to let you to compare. This is actually from a big bull head. A small bull head inside a big bull head right there so the Sumerian also have the bear to mean begin and then the beginning exactly like any other language you know in the whole system okay so the Chinese will use this as the center and the ancient Egyptian ancient Sumerian also will do, use this sign as the spinning the center right there okay so I can finish all the um, uh, slides that I prepared this week but uh, I hope you can go back to YouTube type in uh, basket starfish our language core and you can uh, watch it again okay thank you for watching have a nice